The following is an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel Florida. Florida's Kyle Morris established himself as the Gators' number one quarterback against Montana State. Tonight, he leads the Gators into SEC play against the Ole Miss Rebels, coming off an impressive 24-6 win over Memphis State. The Rebels are led by senior quarterback Mark Young. From Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, Sports Channel Florida presents University of Florida Football. Tonight, the University of Mississippi Rebels take on the Gators from the University of Florida. Florida football is brought to you by Dairy Farmers Incorporated, producers of real Florida fresh milk. By First Union Bank, new banking power for you. And by Scotty's, serving Florida with more than 150 convenient locations. You've got to get to Scotty's now. Mississippi, where tonight's Southeastern Conference play begins for the Gators of Florida and the Rebels of Ole Miss. Both teams come in with wins in their opening game. And Jim, let's talk first about this Mississippi team. They're coming off a disappointing year a year ago. It was Memphis State that got them started in the wrong direction last year. It was Memphis State who they beat impressively last week to get them off on the right foot this year. That's right, 24-6 to six for the Rebels uh, last weekend, and they were excited about that victory because, as you said, Memphis State literally ruined their season last year. Ole Miss went on to uh, a three and eight record very disappointing season for them because in 86 they were eight three and one Billy Brewer the head coach under a bit of pressure here uh, in Mississippi uh, who's going to be a pretender to the throne of the Southeastern Conference and who's going to be a contender for the throne of the Southeastern Conference and I think we'll get some information on that tonight as the Gators line up and face Ole Miss and Ole Miss really in for a test tonight because after tonight they go on the road for three straight weeks at Arkansas, at Alabama, and at Georgia. They've got a tough, tough schedule coming up after tonight. Now as far as the Gators are concerned, Jim, the Gators a week ago played a team that they knew they were going to have little trouble with, Montana State. They had little trouble with them. 69-0 was the final. Galen Hall got though to play a lot of people and get a lot of uh, looks and get some game experience for some of these kids. That's right, Pete. The best news last week was no one got hurt and some of the younger players did get experience, especially the quarterbacks. Uh, starter Kyle Morris got some experience under uh, before a big crowd but uh, this evening it's a different situation and you know the chemistry in a southeastern conference battle is much different so we're very interested as all the fans are in seeing how Kyle Morris performs this this evening he said he was a little nervous going into his first collegiate start last week he may be a little bit nervous tonight too he's from Clinton Mississippi a lot of his friends will be here watching we'll be back with the opening kickoff right after these messages Just about set to get it going here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. The Rebels of Ole Miss will be receiving the kickoff. They've sent Stevon Moore and Pat Coleman back deep. Keep an eye on Pat Coleman throughout the afternoon for Ole Miss. He wears number three. He returned a punt over 80 yards for a touchdown against Memphis State last week, Jim. Well, we got a beautiful night for college football, Pete. A lot of people thought maybe the hurricane coming into Mississippi would uh, ruin the evening, cause uh, disastrous... Uh, conditions for the football game but it couldn't be nicer right now and it couldn't have been worse two hours before game time it was coming down in buckets a couple of hours ago the remnants of hurricane florence passing through but everything is cleared off and we're set for a good night of action from jackson mississippi john david francis approaching the ball keeping it away from coleman steve on moore in the end zone he'll try to run it out and he gets out to about the 17 yard line Curtis White making the tackle. Offensively, Mark Young out of Jacksonville, Florida, the quarterback. Joe Mickles had a big game last week against Memphis State in that backfield. And you see the rest of the offensive starters for the Rebels. Not a lot of depth in their offensive line. That's one of their concerns this year. Big play by the Gator kickoff team, pinning Ole Miss back inside their 20. First play of the game, Mark Young, the quarterback. Mickles and Sykes, the running backs. Mickles, number 41, Sykes, number 46. Young back to throw on first down. Can't find an open receiver. Does find Joey Nicoletto. Number 49, the inside linebacker. As we take a look at the starters defensively, Armstrong, Roth, and Weston in that defensive line. Joey Nicoletto making the first tackle of the game. 
And Lewis Oliver wasn't heard from much last week. He said it's because Montana State never got the ball out to him. He didn't make one tackle. He said the Gators could have played with 10 players and still shut Montana State out. I think Lewis Oliver will see a bit more action this evening. Second down and 13. The ball at the 15-yard line. Young may have changed the play at the line of scrimmage. He gives to his fullback, Joe Mickles. And Mickles doesn't get very far. We're, Pete, we're looking at Wesley Walls. Uh, plays tight end on offense, an outside linebacker on defense, a two-way player in the Southeastern Conference. Very unusual situation, but what a great athlete. 6'5", 250, a senior. Wesley Walls. We were told that most of his playing time would probably come on the offensive side. We got a penalty marked off against the Gators out to the 26-yard line. That's an automatic first down, defensive holding. That's a mental mistake. Uh, defense is playing well uh, physically, but they turn around and make a mental mistake, giving Ole Miss an automatic first down. Willie Green wide left, Pat Coleman wide right. Mickles and Sykes, the running backs behind Mark Young. First down at the 27-yard line. The give is to the fullback, Mickles. Mickles trying to dive and only gets about a yard or so. Maybe not even that much. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to the sideline now. Larry Vitell standing by. Larry. Okay, Pete. You know, a week ago against Montana State, Kyle Morris, when he got the football, was a little over anxious, overthrew it a bit. While he waits for his chance now, he's got to get a little antsy, and he's going to want that ball. We'll keep an eye and see if Kyle's under control as the Gators start offensively in the short time coming up. Second and 10 at the 26. Most of the yardage gained so far by the Rebels came on that penalty. They've been able to move the ball very little against the Gator defense. Young with time, long downfield. Coleman, the intended receiver, and Lewis Oliver gave him a hit back at the 40-yard line. I tell you what, Pat Coleman runs a tremendous route right there. The Gator cornerback is beat. Lewis Oliver recovers in time to knock the ball away, but if that ball had been thrown a little bit harder, Pat Coleman would be standing in the end zone right now. Lewis Oliver coming up with a great play. So it'll be third down and 10. Willie Green back in, replacing Pat Coleman. They'd run the option. The receiver had broke, broken toward the sideline, then turned up field and got wide open. Third and 10. Young back to throw again on the draw play, giving the ball to Sykes, and he gets nowhere. Well, that's an impressive series, Pete, for the Gator defense. Uh, a tremendous job, only one mental error, and they're forcing Ole Miss to kick early in the ballgame. Pat Moore making that last tackle. So now Mississippi will have to punt the ball. Charles Childers is their punter. Last week he kicked seven times. There you see his average yardage. There you see his numbers from a year ago. Stacy Simmons back at about his own 35-yard line for the Gators. A low snap, but Childers handles it. End over end kick. Not a very long kick, just barely reaches midfield. Now bounces inside the 45. It'll roll dead at about the 41-yard line. A 33-yard kick for Childers. No return. 12-12 remaining in this opening quarter. And the Gators go on offense for the first time. Kyle Morris, who played high school football about five miles away from this stadium here in Jackson at Clinton, Mississippi. Very close by. Richard Starweski back in the starting lineup for the Gators this week. And Kyle Morris from Clinton, Mississippi. We've got a Mississippi quarterback playing for the Gators and a Florida quarterback playing for Mississippi. You see Kyle's numbers in his first start. That was only in part of a game. A lot of people got playing time against Montana State. First down, 42-yard line. Morris handing the ball off to Emmett Smith. Smith gets out to the 48-yard line. Sean Cobb, an inside linebacker, making the tackle for Ole Miss. Rodney Lowe, a man to watch in that defensive line. He's from Florida. Huh? There's Wesley Walls, who starts both ways, tight end and offensive linebacker. Roger Hancock, one of the big tacklers last week against Memphis State. Rodney Lowe from Pompano Beach, Florida, an excellent defensive player for Ole Miss, number 31. Emmett Smith gains seven on first down. It's second and three. He gets the ball again. He's got the first down and then some, all the way out to the Mississippi 40-yard line before Todd Sandroni forces him out of bounds. A 10-yard gain for Emmett Smith, who gained almost 150 yards. 
in just 19 carries and scored three touchdowns a week ago. Pete, uh, this afternoon the Gators come out with two tight ends. One back, that's Emmett Smith featuring him on the first two running plays. You see where Emmett Smith is already in just his second game in his sophomore season. And he'll move up a lot higher than that. Cedric Smith, the fullback, bullying his way all the way down to the 36-yard line. Jacobs making the stop. Doug Jacobs, a left tackle out of Moxville, North Carolina, a transfer out of the University of South Carolina. An eight-yard gain. It'll be, call it a seven-yard gain. It'll be second down and three. Ball just outside the Mississippi 36. Emmett Smith across the 35-yard line, piled up at about the 33. Again, Doug Jacobs in on the tackle, number 94. And Lopez Jones, number 88, who will get a lot of playing time behind Wesley Walls, who doesn't stay in there all the time. There are a lot of Gator fans here. They've been in town for the last 24 to 48 hours, enjoying themselves in Jackson and hoping to enjoy a Gator victory here. We're in the opening minutes of the first quarter. There is no score. Pete Van Weer and Jim Yarbrough from Jackson. Third down, about one. Emmett Smith running behind the block from his fullback, Cedric Smith, gets a first down down at the 30-yard line. Daryl Smith, number 53, making the stop. I think one of the things that the Gators are trying to accomplish tonight is get that running game cranked up immediately. Last week they were a bit frustrated with the running game uh, early against Montana State. They finally got the running game going in the second half last week, and they didn't want to wait that long this evening, so they come right out and run right at Ole Miss, featuring, of course, the all-star Emmett Smith. He has gained 22 yards in his first four carries. He has the ball again. Emmett bowling his way down to about the 25-yard line. The first man to get a hand on him was Tony Bennett. Daryl Smith completed the tackle. Lopez Jones also in on the stop. Big Kevin Sills doing a good job. Big David Williams up front, making some room for Emmett Smith. He doesn't need much room. You saw him make two or three cuts real quickly right there, almost at the line of scrimmage. Nice gain for the Gators. He has gained six more yards, 28 yards, and five carries now for Emmett Smith. It's second down and four at the 25-yard line of Ole Miss. Cedric Smith down close to a first down. Looks like he got it at the 20-yard line. Rodney Lowe tripping him up out of Pompano Beach, Florida, a 6'5", 260-pound senior. Another Gator first down. Basically, that was the same running play, uh, giving the ball to Emmett Smith, but they had a different look. They had three wide receivers in the game instead of two tight ends. Lynn Amity, the new offensive coordinator for the Gators, wants to give the opponent plenty of different looks and they have stayed on the ground in this drive picking up four first downs first down at the 20 Emmett Smith inside the 20 down to about the 15 yard line five more yards game Roger Hancock in on the stop along with Lewis Gordon Mississippi has changed a lot of personnel not, not big changes they've moved people from outside linebacker to inside linebacker. They've moved people from outside linebacker to strong safety. As you look at Galen Hall, wearing that tie again, that good luck tie from a week ago. Second down and five. The give is to the fullback, Cedric Smith. He gets about two down to the 13 yard line. Sean Cobb making the stop for Ole Miss. Defensive coordinator Robert Henry of the Ole Miss Rebels. This is the 10th play on this drive for the Gators. Well, that real estate gets tougher to come by as Ole Miss has their backs against the wall. Third down and three at the 13. Morris back to throw for the first time. And he throws it behind his intended receiver, Ernie Mills. Don Price was back in the coverage for Ole Miss. I tell you what, though, he didn't try and force the ball in there. He wisely decided, I think, to throw the ball away. 
allowing John David Francis to come out and get a good uh, chip shot attempt here for three points. You see John David Francis had a busy week against Montana State. He tries to convert this 30-yard field goal to get the Gators on the board. The kick is up by John David Francis. It is good. 7.26 remaining in the opening quarter. The Gators lead it 3-0. We'll be right back. Ready for the Gator kickoff. Florida leading it 3-0. 59 yards, 11 plays, a 30-yard field goal for John David Francis, who kicks off now to Ole Miss. And this is Pat Coleman, who returned an 84-yard punt for a touchdown last week. Good coverage again by the Gators, only out to the 13-yard line. A 13-yard return. Join Sports Channel Florida during the year for all the exciting action of Gator basketball, baseball, and track and field, just to mention a few of the Florida Gator events right here on Sports Channel Florida. Standard equipment for the Florida sports fan. The offensive line of the Gators getting 59 yards worth of work. Converted by John David Francis's 30-yard field goal. Now we'll see if Ole Miss... It wasn't able to do much of anything against the Gator defense, their first possession. See what happens here as they start from the 13. Sean Sykes after the fake to Mickles, and Sykes gets it out to about the 17-yard line. That's the best gain of the evening thus far by Ole Miss. Looks like a dead ball personal foul against the Gators coming up. Someone lost their uh, concentration for a moment, and after the play was over, Unnecessary roughness. Misdirection right here by Ole Miss. Uh, they run the counter option. This is simply a misdirection handing handing the ball off. Lewis Oliver comes up to make the uh, hit, but someone else was involved in a skirmish after the whistle was blown. So the second penalty against the Gator defense moves the ball out to the 32-yard line for Ole Miss. It'll be first down. Young back to throw, has some time. Can't find an open man, now he does, but the pass incomplete. Back on the coverage, Richard Fain, number 28. The intended receiver was Willie Green. And there's that first drive by the Gators. Very impressive on the ground, Jim. Yeah, I think they wanted to establish that right away. That was pretty obvious coming out with two tight ends, but they did give Ole Miss a few different looks. No mental mistakes by the Gators on offense. They moved down, got the three points. That's what they want to do is score every time they get the football. Mark Young now is misconnected on his first two pass attempts of the evening. Second down and 10 at the 32. The pitch goes to Mickles. Mickles gets it out across the 40-yard line to about the 42. Mickles, who was granted an extra year of eligibility after going down with a neck injury in his third game last year. Here comes that option, Pete. Uh, Mickles gets the ball. Watch Sean Sykes make the nice block on Bill Lang, allowing Mickles, who led Ole Miss in rushing last weekend against Memphis State, to pick up some nice yardage. Ole Miss emphasizes that option attack. Mickles last week gained 109 yards against Memphis State. We'll see if he got enough of the first down here. He did just enough. First and 10 for Ole Miss at the 42. Six and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Gators leading at 3-0. That offensive line being talked to by Joe Maggio, the offensive line coach whose counterpart over in the Mississippi side of the field also is a Florida man. The first completion is to Willie Green. The ball is loose, but I believe we had a whistle before the ball was dropped. So it will be a completion out to the 49-yard line to Willie Green. Six-yard gain. Rondy Weston there to make the stop. Mark Young has the ability to pass that football. What the option does is freeze the defense temporarily, makes them play a little bit cautiously, opens up the lanes for that passing game. Second down and four at the Ole Miss 49. Long count by Mark Young. The give is to Mickles, and he's not getting anywhere this time. He is dropped by Bill Lang for a loss of a couple of yards. 
Trace Armstrong also in on the tackle. Watch Armstrong come fight off the block at his defensive end position. Bill Lang's going to come up and say, hey, I've seen this play before. I'm going to make the hit this time at the line of scrimmage. Nice play, Bill Lang, number 24. So now it's third down and five at the Ole Miss 48. A little over five minutes remaining in the opening quarter. Gators leading at 3 nothing. Young back to throw, being chased by Nicoletto, uncorks the pass and completes it to Wesley Walls for a first down at the 39-yard line. Owen Bartriff was back in the coverage for the Gators, a 13-yard gain for Ole Miss, first down in Florida territory. Mark Young a bit nifty right here, avoids the rush of Rondi Weston. Avoids Joey Nicoletto, throws the ball downfield to Wesley Walls, a tight end who knew the quarterback was in trouble and broke toward the sideline. Big Wesley at 6'5", 250, leaps into the air, comes up with a big catch for Ole Miss. So Young's first pass completion gets the Ole Miss Rebels a first down. The handoff is to Mickles. Mickles gets about a yard to about the 38. Pat Moore making the stop for the Gators, number 45. Big hit by Pat Moore, real tough on the inside there. Pat from... Pensacola, Scambia High School, six foot two, twenty-five junior, does a nice job on the inside. Pat Moore. It'll be second down, about eight yards to go for the first down. The ball just inside the Florida thirty-eight. Ole Miss looking much better on this possession than they did the first time around. Young runs away from a rush, and now he's not going to be able to run away from. Number 90, Huey Richardson, the sophomore linebacker from Atlanta. What a play he made, too, Pete. He was knocked to his knees, got up, didn't quit, made the tackle on Young. Nice play, Huey Richardson. So that'll bring it back to the 39-yard line. It'll be third down and just about 10 yards to go for the first down. There we see Huey getting up off the ground, uh, making the tackle. There you see what Huey Richardson did last year. He was bothered a little bit going into the first game by injuries, but he's okay now. Third down and ten. Young back to throw. He's got some pressure applied. He completes the pass, but he's going to get no yardage at all. The pass was to Sean Soder. Back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be fourth down. And Pat Moore does a tremendous job here from his inside linebacker position. Recognizes the screen. Breaks over. Hitting Souter behind the line of scrimmage. So now Charles Childers is checked back in. The Gators stopping Ole Miss. Cole at the Florida 40. And Childers for his second effort of the evening. Stacy Simmons deep back in his own nine-yard line. Calling for the fair catch at the 10. And that's where the Gators will put it in play with 2.15 remaining. A 30-yard kick by Childers. 2.15 remaining opening quarter. 3-0 Gators. We'll be right back. First down for the Gators. 2.15 remaining opening quarter. At their own 10-yard line, Morris hands the ball off to Emmett Smith. He breaks outside, gets to about the 18-yard line, and he's brought down there by Stevon Moore, the right cornerback. Cedric Smith, again, the fullback, making the big block, letting uh, Emmett Smith get outside. The gain is an 8-yard gain. It'll be second down and 2. It's been just about all Emmett Smith on offense for the Gators so far. After an eight-yard gain by Emmett Smith, second down and two. This will be close to the first down, out near the 20-yard line. Sean Cobb making the stop for Ole Miss. It's going to be just shy of the 20. So it'll be third down and about a foot to go for the first down.
Gators decide to line up with two tight ends. Kirkpatrick checking in, Simmons checking out. And we're going to get a timeout called here by the Gators. With 59 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. And Florida leading it 3-0. We'll be right back. The Gators have the ball, third down, about a foot to go for the first down, just shy of their own 20-yard line with less than a minute to go in the opening quarter. Florida leading at 3-0. Morris giving the ball to Emmett Smith. He's got the first down, out to the 24-yard line. Tackle made by Lopez Jones, number 88. Peter wouldn't be surprised to see Kyle Morris uh, unload the football downfield at any time. The Gators are featuring Emmett Smith, run left, run right there. They might be just literally putting Ole Miss to sleep on defense right there and trying to uh, possibly break a wide receiver deep any moment now. Gator mascot on the sideline. First down at the 24-yard line. About 30 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Morris launching one downfield, and it's going to be incomplete, intended for number 20, Tony Lomack. Uh, Lomack was open. Kyle Morris uh, was not able to deliver the football, but uh, Tony Lomack was sprinting down the sideline. They did catch Ole Miss uh, flat-footed a bit right there, but uh, a wasted opportunity, I think. Tell you one man you got to be careful of in that secondary for Ole Miss is Todd Sandroni, the free safety, led the SEC with seven interceptions last year alone. He already has one this year in the Memphis State game, number 19. He's the free safety and a good one, only a sophomore. Emmett Smith again out to the 30-yard line, a gain of about five. The finishing touch on the tackle was applied by Chauncey Godwin after the initial hit by Roger Hancock, number 21. Richard Staroweski limping off the field right now. Hassam Ishmael coming in, the young freshman, redshirt freshman at offensive guard, replacing... Number 75, Richard Starweski. And they will not get another playoff as quarter number one comes to an end with our score. The Florida Gators three, the Rebels of Ole Miss nothing. We'll be right back. Now, here's another great moment in Florida football. A miraculous catch gave the Gators seven points and the lead. It is third down and about five yards to go for the first down. Morris back to throw. He's got time. And the pass is complete to Mark McGriff, the tight end, who gets it out to about the 40-yard line before Stevon Moore brings him down. All right, Pete, two guys do an excellent job right here, and that's Mark McGriff, the tight end, who runs a little hook route in the middle and then breaks to the sideline. He knows he's not open. He's got to beat that linebacker, and he knows the only way he can beat him is run toward the sideline, and Kyle Morris knew that as well. An excellent job by the quarterback and the tight end working in tandem on the pass play. That is his first completion. Good for 10 yards and a first down at the Gator 40. Back to throw again. He was out of bounds, I believe. Sneed, the intended receiver, caught the ball, but he was out of bounds when he caught it. Be sure to join Sports Channel Florida for the next Florida Gator football telecast coming up next Saturday, September 17th, 11.30 Eastern Time, when the Gators take on the Indiana State Sycamores. Morris now one out of four in the passing department, good for those 10 yards, second down and 10. He's back to throw again. Launching one downfield. Again, the intended receiver is Willie Sneed. Again, it's incomplete. Don Price back in the coverage. That was like one of those high fastballs that take off on the pitcher. That one just kind of flew into the uh, stands. Tell you what, there is some wind to contend with here today. That front blew through about two hours before game time, bringing a lot of rain with it. 
And the breeze right now in the Gators' face. They're going to have problems with uh, the time right here. They might uh, have to hustle when they get up to the line of scrimmage. Third down and ten. In the opening minute of quarter number two, the Gators have the ball, but they're going to have to kick it away. Miscommunication between the quarterback and the center. Causing the fumble. And the Ole Miss crowd on their feet as the defense comes off. Hank Roan will come on to punt now. Didn't get much work against Montana State last week. Punted only once. Pat Coleman, the deep man for Ole Miss. And this one drops dead inside the 35-yard line at about the 33. A 30-yard kick. And Ole Miss will put it in play first and 10. With just under 14 minutes remaining in the second quarter. And the Gators leading it 3-0. The Rebels of Ole Miss with a first down at their own 33. Mark Young, who's two out of five in the passing department, back to throw, and a very nice catch by Joe Mickles at the 37-yard line. Let's go down to the field now and Larry Vitell. You know, Pete, all leading up to this game, we were concerned if Hurricane Florence would make a mess out of this game. Well, it really hasn't, but what it's done is made a little bit of a mess out of the turf. It's very soft. It's getting chewed up as the game goes along, and footing could be very difficult later on this evening. A gain of about five on that last play, second down and five. Young back to throw, a deep drop. Finds an open receiver and dropping the football, who was wide open. Jim Earl Thomas, number 20. Young does a nice job of avoiding the Gator rush right here. But the football's dropped. Jeff Roth, number 96, the nose guard, put in a lot of pressure on Young, but to no avail. Thomas, with three catches a week ago, couldn't hang on to that one. Third down and five. Young back to throw again under some heavy pressure, running away from it. Now he's going to try to get the first down on the ground, and he's got it. Young running away from Gator pressure, crosses the 50-yard line. First down, Ole Miss. Rondy Weston chasing him. All right, the Gators put on a big blitz right here, but there's a breakdown on the outside. Someone, Nicoletto, has responsibility, I believe, for the outside, but uh, Young escapes to the outside, and there's no one there. Everyone else is deep in the secondary covering the receivers. Whenever you blitz, there's always someone responsible and did you see the quarterback. Did you see in. the block that Willie Green put on Lewis Oliver on that particular play? A 13-yard gain for Mark Young, first down, 49-yard line. Mickles, the fullback. Getting pretty good yardage down to the 44. Bill Lang making the stop along with Ephesians Bartley. Joe Mickles got over 100 yards rushing last week against Memphis State, doing an excellent job tonight. In this option attack, they feature the fullback. The fullback will carry the ball more than any other player on the field, including the tailbacks. Gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Mark Young, a senior, moving up on the all-time passing lists for the Rebels. Archie Manning, John Forcade, two great uh, Ole Miss quarterbacks. I'm sure they're up there in one and two. And Young had to battle John Darnell to win his job this year. The pass is complete to Pat Coleman. Down to the 37-yard line. Kurt Young making the stop for the Gators. It is another Ole Miss first down. And their offense, Jim, has gotten a little bit better each possession. Well, that's the difference when you line up against a Southeastern Conference opponent. You might stop them once, you might stop them twice, but I doubt if you'll stop them three times in a row. And Ole Miss just comes right back and establishes an offensive attack of their own. Pat Coleman, a tailback at junior college last year, voted the Mississippi Junior College Player of the Year. First down, Ole Miss. Young with time. Penalty markers are dropped. Mickles on the receiving end across the 35 to about the 34-yard line. Joey Nicoletto making the stop, but back near the line of scrimmage. There is a flag down. Nicoletto made the tackle. There's a flag on the play. 
Now, this is what gives the coaches migraine, headaches, and ulcers. Uh, Ole Miss is looking good on offense, and all of a sudden they turn around and self-destruct with a holding play up front. They had the Gators on skates for a bit. Yep, holding up front by Ole Miss. Looked like number 67, Derek King, was the man responsible. The penalty moves the ball back to the 45-yard line. Second penalty against the Rebels. First down and 20. Young back to throw. A man is wide open. And inside the 25-yard line, the ball is loose, and the Gators have recovered. Ephesians Bartley made the stop on Jim Earl Thomas, who coughed the ball up, and Bartley jumped on it. Well, this is a well-designed play. Mark Young hits Jim Earl Thomas. Watch the Gators attack the draw, but Young still has the ball. Throws to Jim Earl Thomas, who's breaking across the middle. Ephesians Bartley in hot pursuit. Look at the speed of the linebacker not giving up. He clearly knocks the ball loose before the knees hit the ground and turns around and recovers the fumble. So the Gators have it first down at their own 28. Penalty markers down, the handoff to Emmett Smith. Smith out to the 40, out to the 45, out of bounds at about midfield. Todd Sandroni finally forced Emmett Smith out of bounds, but it's going to be brought back. The penalty is going to be called against the Gators after that 20-yard gain by Emmett Smith. So penalty is Jim hurting both clubs in this first half. Well, obviously both teams have plenty of talent on the field, and they've proven they can move the ball against each other, but it's the mental mistakes right now that keep, uh, keep them from moving the ball consistently. The only score in this game so far, a 30-yard field goal by John David Francis of the Gators about midway through that first quarter. Kyle Morris, one out of five. Had one completion, good for 10 yards, but now it's first down and 15. Morris back to throw. And the pass caught at the 45-yard line by Ernie Mills. 24-yard gain, good for a first down. Well, Pete Kyle Morris shows a lot of patience right here, something that he's had a bit of a problem with. He's a little bit too anxious from time to time, but right here he throws a perfect pass to Ernie Mills, dropping it over the linebacker just in front of the defensive back, Don Price. Ernie Mills comes up with a big catch for the Gators. Morris now two out of six for 34 yards. You see what Mills did a week ago against Montana State. Ernie Mills with plenty of speed on the outside. Morris back to throw again. This one in Stacy Simmons, the intended receiver. So it'll be second down and ten. Yeah, earlier we were pointing out how uh, Mark McGriff and Kyle Morris were on the same page uh, with a pass route that time. Stacy Simmons and Kyle Morris uh, had no communication at all and misread each other on the pass and the route. Willie McGrady in there at the fullback spot now. Emmett Smith the tailback. Second down and ten. That's Wayne Williams. Not Emmett Smith at the tailback spot. He gets across the 50-yard line. Gain of about five. Roger Hancock making the stop. I was talking to the offensive backfield coach, Larry Kirksey, earlier this week, and he said Wayne Williams has been very impressive uh, all during their preseason practices and up through uh, last week's preparation for Montana State. He's expecting Wayne Williams to make a major contribution this season to the Gators' offense. Third and five at the Mississippi 48-yard line. A little over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Morris back to throw. Launches one for Stacy Simmons, who makes the reception at the 25-yard line. First down for the Gators. Good catch there by Stacy Simmons. But to be Todd Sandroni back in the coverage. Pete, to be successful, obviously, in the Southeastern Conference, you have to be able to do a number of things well. The Gators came out early, ran the ball well. Now they're coming out and showing a consistent passing game. Stacy Simmons coming up with an excellent catch. Ernie Mills making an excellent catch a little earlier. The wide receivers are uh, looking tremendous early in the season for the Gators. First down at the Ole Miss 25-yard line. The ball is loose. Rebels say they have it, but the referees say no, you don't. The Gators recover their own fumble. 
loss of about two yards on the play. Charlie Wright from San Juan Capistrano, California, coming up with the uh, football. Those offensive linemen don't get to touch the football very often. I'm sure he'll cherish that fumble recovery. Second down and 12. At the Ole Miss 27. Emmett Smith back at that tailback spot. Can't find a lot of running room this time. He got a yard or two. Lopez Jones, number 88, making the stop. Along with Tony Bennett, number 89, who is from, he's a Gator himself. He's from Alligator, Mississippi. Population. One less tonight. <laughs> Not much out that, huh? I bet it's not too big. Third down and nine. <laughs> Willie Sneed is checked in as an extra wide receiver. On third and long. Morris firing. And it is complete inside the 10-yard line to Willie Sneed. Don Price back in the coverage, a 13-yard gain. Good for a Gator first down. Again, Kyle Morris showing poise under pressure right here. Drills a strike to Willie Sneed, who's breaking across the middle. Just an excellent job by the young quarterback right there. It's either feast or famine with a young quarterback sometimes. It's been a good drive for the Gators. It started back at their own 28-yard line. Now it's first and goal from the 10. Emmett Smith in some heavy traffic up to about the seven yard line. Nine plays in this drive. Daryl Smith making the stop for Ole Miss. They'll mark it at the six yard line. It'll be second and goal. Well, the coaches always say you have to run the ball well, you have to pass the ball well, but what you also have to do is come up with big third down conversions from time to time, and the Gators have done that on this drive. Second and goal from the six-yard line. Morris keeping it, getting down to about the three-yard line. The initial hit applied by Dan Wigley and Lester Brinkley. Big Keith Thompson in there as well, number 87. Counter option. Kyle Morris, who has good speed. He runs a 4-6, which is excellent speed for a college quarterback. Does a nice job there on the counter option. Ducks his head. Moves down to, what, the three and a half. And a big play here for the Gators now. Third and goal just outside the three-yard line. McGrady and Emmett Smith, the running backs behind Kyle Morris. Just over seven minutes remaining in the half. The give is to Emmett Smith. And Emmett Smith bowls his way down to about the two-yard line. Daryl Smith, number 53, bringing him down there with help from Lester Brinkley, number 98. And now a decision for Galen Hall, fourth and goal, just inside the two. Now this will be an interesting call right here. He looks like he's going to go for it, uh, Pete. Uh, going to go for the seven. Or, yeah, it's fourth and goal, isn't it? One and a half yard line. Gutsy uh, call right here. Going to try it. Fourth down. 6.25 remaining, first half, 3 nothing Gators. Will Ole Miss keep it at three, or can the Gators take it in from two yards? Timeout. Kyle Morris calling a timeout, stopping the clock with 6.14 remaining in the second quarter. Gators lead it 3 nothing. We'll be right back. Fourth and goal from the two-yard line. The give, no give. Morris still has it. Trying to throw to the end zone. It is incomplete. The intended receiver was the tight end, Mark McGriff. And the Ole Miss Rebels have stopped the Gators at the two-yard line. Lester Brinkley. Well, last week the Gators ran that power T formation to the right. This time it's a fake. Kyle Morris trying to get outside. But Tony Bennett does a nice job of staying home. He refuses to uh, be sucked into the uh, bootleg action, and Kyle Morris is forced to throw the ball. He actually had a run-throw option right there. His best opportunity was to try and hit Mark McGriff, but it didn't work. 
The Gators controlled the ball for five minutes, five seconds. They ran 12 plays. They covered 70 yards. And they come up empty. First down Ole Miss at their own two. 6.08 remaining first half. Young giving to Mickles, the fullback. He'll get about a yard, no more. Get close to the five. Second down. It'll be second down and about eight. Well, I'm sure Coach Hall's thinking there was if they were not going to make it, at least Ole Miss would be in terrible field position. The Gator defense is playing rather well, uh, so it was worth the gamble. Unfortunately, Ole Miss didn't get sucked into the uh, bootleg action, and uh, the Gators came up empty-handed. Second down and seven as they mark the ball just across the four-yard line, out near the five. Young back to throw. Now he'll keep it and be brought down at about the eight-yard line. He was looking downfield, trying to find Willie Green. Called Pepper, making the stop for the Gators. Sec second unit out on the field right now. Brad Culpepper at nose guard. Tony McCoy, number 71, on the field as well. Glenn Neely, number 70, trying to give some of the uh, Gator starters a rest. Jerry, Alternating personnel. Jerry Odom in there at one of the linebacking spots. A lot of linebackers saw game action last week, and they all played well. Third down and four. The give is to Sykes, and Sykes has a first down for Ole Miss. Not close to the 15-yard line. So the Rebels, who are back in their own two, have gotten a little more operating room. It's going to be shy of the 15, but just shy by about a yard. Well, that Ole Miss offense is fired up because they saw their defense shut the Gators out, not allowing Florida to score when Florida had an excellent opportunity on the one-and-a-half-yard line. Now that Ole Miss offense has got a... Uh, a lot of positive thinking going on inside that huddle. That 30-yard field goal by John David Francis in the first quarter, still the game's only score. Sykes not finding running room that time. Jerry Odom, inside linebacker, doing a nice job. His dad, Gerald Odom, played at the University of Florida in the, uh, the late 50s, early 60s. Herbert Perry, the backup quarterback to Kyle Morris. They battle it out in preseason. I wouldn't be surprised to see Herbert Perry play a Quite a bit in the uh, in the ball game before the final whistle. Second down and ten at the Ole Miss 14. 3:44 the time left in the first half. Young with plenty of time. Now the time begins to expire back there. Brad Culpepper. Trace Armstrong does an excellent job right here, staying in his lane, putting pressure on the quarterback. Did not allow Young to get outside. Young tried to escape the pressure right there, but Trace Armstrong would not let him outside. Watch Trace Armstrong on the top of your screen. Young tries to sprint out, but he's not going to let him get out there. Trace Armstrong probably the fastest of the Gator defensive linemen, allowing Tony McCoy to come in and make the sack with help from Brad Culpepper. Nice play, Trace Armstrong. Loss of six yards, third down, 16. 303 remaining in the half. A timeout will be taken here by Ole Miss. We've got 3.01 remaining in the second quarter. Still a 3-0 Gators lead. We'll be right back. Third down and 16. 3.01 remaining. Ole Miss has the ball in their own eight-yard line. They've got Jeffrey Holder out wide to the left. Looks like Shane Coughlin. Or no, that's Reed Hines out wide to the right. But they're not going to throw the ball. They give it to Mickles. Who gets it up to the 10-yard line, that's all. Jeff Roth making the stop. And Ole Miss will have to kick it away to the Gators. Now the Gators with the offensive drive that didn't get points on the board and then the defense stiffening up right here. Keep Ole Miss with bad field position. The Gator offense will have another opportunity to get in that end zone before the halftime if they can move the ball with any consistency right here, but they'll have an excellent field position. Charles Childers. Looks like the Gators are going to try to block this kick. They're sending everybody, and they almost got it. They may have tipped it just a little bit. Stacy Simmons is going to let that ball bounce, and it rolls out to about the 49-yard line. 
Well, you know, Pete, the Gators have blocked punts in three games in succession, and uh, they're not uh, bashful at all about going for it right here. Almost tipped the ball, come very close right here. I don't think there is any contact, but... Boy, almost. Excellent play. He, yes, went, he went for the ball, went for the foot, didn't hit the punter, and the Gators do have good field position inside the 50. 39-yard kick by Childers. 2.15 remaining in the first half. 3-0 Gators. First down at the Ole Miss 49. Morris has time. And the pass is caught by the tight end at the 45-yard line. McGriff making the reception. You know, Pete, when Lynn Amity was the offensive coordinator at uh, Texas A&M, his tight end caught over 100 passes in two seasons. So he's going to feature the tight end quite often. And Mark McGriff does a nice job of holding on to the football here after taking a big hit. Getting up off the ground to make that catch. Second down and six. Morris back to throw. Penalty markers are down. The pass almost picked off by Don Price. But we've got a penalty marker back near midfield. That'll stop the clock with a minute 36 remaining in the half. It's going to go against the Gators. Hmm, another holding. It looks like it might have been Charlie Wright, the offensive guard right there, that uh, got caught holding the ball. Now the Gators, instead of having the ball inside Mississippi territory, are backed up on their own 45-yard line. And it'll be second down and 16. Billy Brewer looking on his Ole Miss Rebels, winners last week over Memphis State. You know, he was coach of the year twice since he's been at Ole Miss in the Southeastern Conference. Coach of the year twice. Last year, really an unexplainable year for Mississippi. Yeah, tell the fans that. They know that. A minute 36 remaining. It's second down, 16. Morris back to throw. Somebody got a hand up. Might have been Doug Jacobs, number 94, or Rodney Lowe, number 31. A lot of height up front. Doug Jacobs is six foot eight. Rodney Lowe is six five. Makes it a little difficult on Kyle Morris. Throwing the football, someone's going to get their hand up. Oh, looks like Rodney Lowe coming from the outside with a pressure. So Lowe was on the quarterback. Doug Jacobs, number 94, got a hand on the football. It's third down and 16. A minute and a half to go in the first half. Gators still leading at 3 0. And another tipped pass. And I believe it was Doug Jacobs again, number 94, getting a hand on it. And Ole Miss is going to get the ball back with about a minute 25 remaining. Well, we mentioned Doug Jakes. Of, Doug Jacobs is six foot eight. I'm sure he's blocked a few shots in uh, on the basketball court before. And right there, he swatted the ball away. Morris now six out of 12 for 73 yards in the passing department. Hank Rohn on to punt. So much for the Gators taking advantage of good field position. High kick is going to carry. Inside the 20-yard line, it'll be down at about the 16-yard line. A minute 15 to go, a 38-yard kick for Hank Rohn. Ole Miss will have the ball when we get back. It's 3-0 Gators. We'll be right back. A minute 15 remaining in quarter number two. Gators leading at 3-0. Pete Van Wehr and Jim Yarbrough back with you from Jackson. Ole Miss first down. Young pitching to Mickles. Mickles out across the 20, out across the 25, close to a first down. Tripped up by Pat Moore. Yeah, on that option, Huey Richardson got caught between a rock and a hard place. He didn't know whether he should hit Young the quarterback or Mickles the fullback, and he winds up not getting either one of them. This is going to be very close to a first down. It is a first down after a 10-yard gain by Mickles. Young running away from pressure. Now is just going to head for the sidelines. Pat Moore doing a nice job of hustling Young out of bounds, but uh, Young does stop the clock uh, for Ole Miss. 34 seconds to go in the first half. 
They'll mark the ball just inside the Mississippi 35. Where it'll be second down and about three. Just 34 seconds to go in the half. Gators have the only points. A 3-0 lead on the Francis field goal from 30 yards out midway through the first quarter. Young back to throw. He's got some protection. He's got Willie Green open. The pass, though, is incomplete. As Willie Green was sandwiched, Tony Jones, number eight, right there on him. Tony Jones does an excellent job of breaking on the football. Young, again, given good time throwing this evening. Watch Tony Jones break right on the ball. Gets there just at the instant the ball does, knocks it away. Jeffrey Holder checking in for Willie Green now for Ole Miss. It's third down and three. 25 seconds remain in the half. The ball at the Ole Miss 35. Young keeping it. He's going to be close to the first down, but he may not have made it. Out near the 38-yard line. Looks like it will be fourth down. I know Billy Brewer didn't want to send his punt team out here right before the half because it gives the Gators another chance of maybe blocking the punt. Well, I think they'll just let time run out now. Yep. And that will be the case. Well, folks, this is the Southeastern Conference. And at the end of two quarters of play here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, it's the Florida Gators three and the Rebels of Ole Miss nothing. We'll be right back. Third quarter just about to begin here at halftime. The Gators leading it 3-0. It's been a very evenly played game. You can see the first down's the same. The rushing and passing yardage a little bit in Florida's favor. But the big number there, Jim, in that first half, the penalty yardage difference between the Gators and the Rebels. Yeah, I know the coaches were emphasizing that in the locker room, saying, hey, guys, let's do not beat ourselves. Quit making mental mistakes. Let's get out there, continue to move the football, do what we know how to do, but let's don't beat ourselves. Ole Miss back on the field already. Now the Gators heading out toward the sideline. First conference game for each school. And as we mentioned at the outset, things really get tough for Ole Miss after this week. They have three straight road games at Arkansas, at Georgia, at Alabama. And that's the Bermuda Triangle for college football. Games. And conversely, the Gators have three games at home in succession. Uh, with the uh, SEC expanding to seven conference games this season, it's obviously very important to win your conference ball games at any time, but when you're playing a conference opponent at home, like Ole Miss is, there's even more pressure on you to win. These two teams haven't met that often. Ole Miss leads in the overall series. They've won eight of these meetings. Six of them have been won by Florida, and one of them is a tie, and they haven't met since 1981 when the Gators won 49-3 in Gainesville. Join Sports Channel Florida this fall for Florida's only coverage of the exciting and fast-paced National Hockey League. We'll bring you regular season action, the All-Star Game, the postseason playoffs, including complete coverage of the Stanley Cup Finals. The NHL coming this fall only on Sports Channel Florida, standard equipment for the Florida sports fan. Well, we are set to go. Quarter number three about to get underway. Florida will be receiving. Kyle Morris, whose first half of play showed five completions and 13 attempts for 76 yards. Uh, Pete, a good opportunity here for the Gators receiving the ball at the beginning of the second half. They can get out there right now and establish something on offense right off the bat. Wayne Williams and Stacy Simmons are deep. The Ole Miss kickoff is a line drive that sails out of bounds at the 20-yard line. It'll be brought back. Right now, let's go down to the Florida sidelines. Larry Vitell standing by. Larry. 
last week that Kyle Moore has settled down after a while. He hasn't really settled down yet in this ball game. A couple of mishandled snaps, a couple of timeouts because the 25 second clock was about to run down. This first possession I think is awfully important for the freshman playing in front of his home fans, his home friends, to settle down and move this football team and relax a little bit, get the Gators going. He is from Clinton, Mississippi, which I'm told is only about a five minute drive from this very stadium. Well, he's obviously under a lot of pressure. Uh quarterback I thought he did very well in the first half he just has to uh, find some consistency now the kickoff from the 30 yard line and it's Stacy Simmons at the 15 out across the 30 Simmons trying to break one gets inside the 40 still on his feet Simmons can anybody catch him no. Stacy Simmons from the 10 yard line took it all the way back 85 yards for the touchdown well that'll get your attention won't it Pete my goodness, what an effort. And there are no penalty flags that are going to bring this one back. Just a brilliant job by the Gator kickoff return team and one fantastic effort by an outstanding athlete, Stacy Simmons, the fastest player on the Gators squad. A beautiful hole right here opened up by the Gators. Now look at his ability to cut back across the field. We showed He showed glimpses of that last year on a few receptions. We knew he had that kind of ability, and my goodness, did he show it this evening. So just like that, the Gators have made it 9-0. Now John David Francis on for the extra point attempt, which is good. It is 10-0 Gators. Only 14 seconds have gone by in quarter number three, and boy, is the complexion of this game changed. We'll be right back. A little bit of deja vu for Galen Hall. It was Stacy Simmons on the receiving end of a 93-yard pass last week that really got the Gators going. Yeah, Galen's telling his players, I told you that play would work. It is 10-0. We're only 14 seconds into quarter number three. Coleman. Out to about the 21-yard line. Good coverage again by the Gators. Owen Bartriff making the tackle, a 15-yard return, and Ole Miss will put it in play first down at their own 22. Last week against Memphis State, uh, Ole Miss returned a punt for a touchdown, blocked a punt for a touchdown. Specialty teams very important in Southeastern Conference battles. Gators have the big edge here this evening in specialty team play. There's a look at the numbers on Mark Young in the first half. His running backs are Mickles and Sykes. And somebody got a hand up for the Gators. That ball is still alive. Now it falls incomplete. Big Rondy Weston, number 68 from Belglade Central High School. Rondy, six foot five, got the big ham hocks up there and knocked the ball away. So the incompletion makes it second and 10. At the Ole Miss 22. Rondy Weston, number 68, on the left side of your screen, rushing the quarterback. Young tries to get the ball to a receiver. Rondy knocks it away. Second and 10 at the 22. Long count by Young. Now he pitches the ball to Mickles, and the big fullback gets about two yards. Stopped just shy of the 25-yard line. Rondy Weston, fifth-year senior, I mentioned, from Belglade Central High School. They're looking for him to offer some leadership to that Gator defense. You know, the Gator defense, Pete, has three down linemen that are fifth-year seniors. Jeff Roth does a great job, number 96 right there. Uh, Trace Armstrong, number 93, and then Ron Dean Weston, number 68, doing a nice job. Trace Armstrong made that last tackle after a gain of three. It's third and seven. Young back to throw. He's got Coleman open if he can reach him. Interference, and that's a good call by the officials. It'll be a Mississippi break. The hit was applied just a tad too soon. Bill Lane got beat on the route in, uh, in trying to recover. Hits the receiver before the ball gets there. Now, Willie Green caught five passes last week against Memphis State, so they were looking to him to uh, come up with some big uh, receptions this evening for Ole Miss. Right there, he had Bill Lang beat. Uh, Lang comes up with the interference penalty. And they mark the ball at the 40-yard line after stepping off the yardage. That is five penalties called against the Gators now, 55 yards. Well, it's always better to give up an interference penalty than give up a touchdown right there. So Bill Lang was taking no chances. 
In fact, there are some college football coaches that would like to see the NFL rule applied there because it does sometimes give a guy kind of a free shot at somebody. Nichols, the fullback, gaining a body yard. That's right. In college football, the, uh, the penalty is marked off from the line of scrimmage rather than from the point of the infraction right there. And Bill Lang uh, really uh, didn't create that much of a problem for his teammates with that penalty. However, like you said, Pete, if they had penalized him at the infraction point, it would have been, what, around the 40-yard line? Around the 40-yard line. If you're beaten on a play, it's almost uh, an invitation to give the guy a hit because it's only going to cost you 15 yards instead of the touchdown. That's right. Second down and nine. And Florida all over Mark Young. Joey Nicoletto got through there. Another fifth-year senior from Tampa Chamberlain. Joey Nicoletto blitzing. He timed it perfectly right there. The coaches, again, they want to emphasize to the players, don't guess, anticipate, don't guess. But he was right there uh, like a shot on the quarterback. Young had no chance at all. And that is Nicoletto's second sack of the evening. It's third down now and 13. About 12 and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Gators leading at 10 nothing. Stacy Simmons with an 85-yard kickoff return to start the second half. Young firing downfield. It is complete at the 48-yard line to Reed Hines, number five. He's a Floridian out of Milton. 17-yard gain. Tony Jones has his hands full right here. Uh, the one thing that makes this play work is Mark Young has the time. Steps up, avoids the uh, pass rush, and hits Hines perfectly on his sideline route. Tony Jones giving Hines a little bit too much room right there on the play. So it's an old Miss first down at the Gator 47. Young back to throw. Firing long downfield for Coleman again, and this one is incomplete. Lewis Oliver, number 18, doing a nice job coming over there. The Gators, uh, All-American hopeful, helping out Bill Lang, Bill Lang and Tony Jones on the play. Ole Miss putting the ball up quite frequently here in the uh, beginning of the second half. Young's not bashful about throwing the football at all. He is now 7 out of 13 for 65 yards. Again, we haven't called Oliver's name much in this game, but I think every team is just trying to keep the plays away from him. Well, and also his teammates do such an excellent job up close to the football, he rarely has a chance to get in on the play. Second down and 10. Young. Boy, that line has been all over Young, but we get a loss there of a couple of yards back to the 50. Brent Ellis doing a nice job in, in at inside linebacker. Watch Ellis. Watch Trace Armstrong. That's what you call an Olay move right there. Trace Armstrong, instead of hitting at the uh, offensive lineman, just simply gave him a uh, Olay move, whipped around the outside, and was so quick he could come back in and make the tackle. Three-yard loss makes it third and 13 right at midfield. Willie Green wide to the left. Reed Hines wide to the right on third and long. Young back to throw again. Again, he's firing long downfield for Willie Green, and he's got him for the touchdown. 50-yard touchdown strike from Mark Young to Willie Green, who beat Richard Fain. And the Rebels are right back in it. mentioned Willie Green had five receptions last week against Memphis State. He was just waiting to break loose. Wasn't used hardly at all. I don't think he had one reception in the first half. Comes out in the second half. Has two big receptions for Ole Miss. They are going 4-2. And they got it. It is a two-point Gator lead. 10-8 with 11-02 remaining in the third quarter. Willie Green's 
sprints down the sideline. Richard Fain in coverage. Green just hesitates for a second, then puts it in gear, runs right by Fain. Fain doing a nice job, but Green was just too quick for him, comes up with the bomb. That drive took eight plays, covered 78 yards, 50 of them on that touchdown strike from Young to Green, and the Rebels are right back in it. It is 10-8, a two-point Gator lead. Well, they say football is a game of inches, and right here, Young just avoids Rodney Weston on the rush, gets the bomb off to Green, and comes up with the reception. Now the Rebel crowd making some noise. 11.02 to go, third quarter. Gators leading at 10-8. Max Smith kicks it off. Taken at the 11-yard line. Stacy Simmons broke one to start the second half. And a good return this time out to the 36-yard line. Stacy Simmons almost broke loose again, but number 32, Tony Harris, the defensive back, comes up with a tackle. A 25-yard kickoff return that time for Stacy Simmons. Gator specialty teams doing an excellent job. Anytime you get outside the 20, it's a victory for the return team. Not only do that, do they do that, but they get out to about the 36-yard line for the Gators. First down, Florida. 10:53 remaining, third quarter. Gators leading at 10-8. Emmett Smith trying to reverse direction at the 41-yard line is brought down. Yeah, I got think, a penalty flag. Yeah, I think it's a good call. It was an inadvertent late hit. It wasn't intentional, but uh, Emmett Smith is so dangerous. He's going to get the pitch right here. Cedric Smith doing a nice job. John Durden up front throwing the block. Now watch him cut back, and the late hit is going to come in right here. He's down in... Big 94, Doug Jacobs, who we mentioned is only 6'8", 262, takes a shot at Emmett, but it wasn't intentional. He was just hustling over to the play, but got there a bit late. There you see the scoring drive by Mississippi. 50-yard touchdown pass to Willie Green to make it 10-8. First down for the, Re for the Gators now at the Rebel 43. And a good reception there by Ernie Mills inside the 40-yard line. Don Price back in the coverage for the Rebels. Pete, this is a strictly a timing play. Kyle Morris will take one, two, three steps, throws the ball before Ernie Mills even makes the cut. The ball is in the air. Mills comes up with a nice one-handed catch. Second, and we're calling it, what, three or four? About four yards to go for the first down. The ball marked just inside the 37-yard line. Second catch for Ernie Mills on the evening. Emmett Smith, who is very, very tough to bring down anytime he gets the ball. He's got a first down inside the 30. Lopez Jones, Tony Bennett making the stop. Big David Williams, Kevin Sills, Tracy Daniels, Hassam Ismail are actually rich. Richard Starweski's back in the game right now after getting hurt early in the first half. And John Durden doing a nice job up front for the Gator offense. A lot of beef up front for the Gators. A lot of experience. Three five-year seniors up front for the Gators. An eight-yard gain for Emmett Smith, who's carried the ball 14 times for 70 yards in the game. First down for the Gators. Emmett Smith again. Inside the 25, down to about the 21-yard line. Another gain of about seven. Doug Jacobs making the tackle. Cedric Smith, the lead blocker, Emmett Smith, uh, showing his athletic ability as well. Now the Gators are moving the ball consistently at midfield. Now it's going to get tough down here as we see Emmett Smith move the ball almost down to the 20-yard line. Gators looking good on offense, but can they move inside the 20 as easily? Second down and two at the 21. The give this time is to the fullback, Cedric Smith, who gets enough for the first down, it appears, down to about the 16-yard line. A lot of Gator fans here. I'd estimate probably three or 4,000. Yeah, and I think uh, you got to give Ole Miss credit. They gave the Gator fans some great tickets, too. Yeah, they're they on about the 30-yard line. Good seats over there. Usually they stick the folks in the uh, end zone when they're visiting. It's a first down for Florida. At the Ole Miss 17. Emmett Smith inside the five. 
They're going to call it down at about the one-yard line. You think he's going to be down at the eight or nine-yard line, and somehow he winds up at the one. Emmett Smith on a lead draw. This is a lead draw. A little bit of draw action right there. David Williams does a nice job. Cedric Smith on the lead block, and Emmett Smith falls forward to about the one-yard line. Kevin Sills blocking. Look at the fullback throwing the block there on number 44, Sean Cobb. 16 carries, 93 yards now for Emmett Smith. First and goal. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown Gators. Now a penalty marker being thrown. Cedric Smith carried the ball over for Florida. And a little bit of fiery tempers after the touchdown was made. Yeah, I think it's a dead ball foul after the whistle. It won't affect the uh, six points at all. So that'll make it 16 to 8, Florida. Yeah. All against Florida. And John David Francis will try to make it 17. They'll assess the penalty on the kickoff, evidently. There's the snap, and the kick by Francis is good. A timeout with 8.08 remaining in the third quarter. The Gators lead at 17-8. We'll be right back. Emmett Smith just seven yards away from another 100-yard performance. It is 17-8, Gators leading Ole Miss with 8.08 remaining third quarter. Pete Van Wehr and Jim Yarborough with you from Jackson. Some similarities, Jim, this week to last week's game. The Gators' offense looked a little better last week in the third quarter. It's looked a little better tonight now that we're into the third quarter. A lot of fireworks here in Jackson in this third quarter. What an exciting football game we have in this second half. Had some fireworks at halftime, too, while I was trying to conduct an interview. <laughs> At the 10-yard line, Coleman. He's dangerous. He gets out across the 35. A good return for Pat Coleman. 26 yards. Well, the kickoff was a bit short because of that penalty, that uh, personal foul that the Gators had. Dead ball foul when they scored the touchdown, so they're not able to come up with good field position right here. Ole Miss has excellent field position for their offense. Brent Ellis made the tackle. We've got a penalty marker way back downfield at about the 19-yard line. Let's see what that's all about. Well, Ole Miss is debating whether to uh, penalize Florida five yards for offsides or take the field position they had right there, and they're going to make them kick again. Uh, John David Francis is even going to be further back. I think this is a record. I've never seen a team kick from there. You've never seen a kickoff from here before. They'll be from kicking the off from the 15-yard line. Yard line. Eight oh two. the time left in this third quarter. So now Mississippi is going to get this kickoff at about the, oh, around the 30-yard line or so. Yeah, the kickoff team might wind up lining up in the end zone at, uh, with, with this kick. John David Francis will be kicking this one from the 15. Jim Earl Thomas and Pat Coleman, the two deep backs for the Rebels. That's seven penalties now against the Gators for 75 yards. Nice kick. Very Thomas nice has kick. a tip off his hands at the 15. Now he recovers out across the 20. And he'll get to the 32-yard line. So they're actually going to wind up a few yards back where they were on the initial kickoff. Well, they took a gamble that they'd get better field position, but John David Francis really got his foot into that football right there. It's a 21-yard return, but they're going to put the ball in play five yards beyond where they were the first time. And now it's up to that Gator defense to see if they can shut down the Ole Miss attack. Young, the quarterback. Mickles and Sykes, the running backs. Hines and Green are wide to the left. The give is to Mickles. And Mickles with a good gain out to about the 39-yard line. Gain of about six. It'll be second down and four. Seven plays, 63 yards. Cedric Smith carrying it over. 
John David Francis adding the extra point, which was important because it gives the Gators a nine-point lead. Mickles now 13 carries for 40 yards. Young back to throw. The pass intended for Reed. Hines is incomplete. Hines was open on the play. That's one of the uh, few times that we've seen Young throw a bad pass all evening. He's been on the mark uh, more often than not. Senior quarterback we mentioned from Jacksonville, Florida, Ed White High School. He is now 9 out of 14, 115 yards, and that one touchdown, of course, which covered 50 of those yards to Willie Green. Third and four. Young again back to throw under some pressure. Escapes some of it, but not all of it. He did not get it back to the line of scrimmage. Joey Nicoletto in there again. He's had a good game this week. He sure has. Uh, and Jeff Roth also putting pressure from his nose guard position. Jeff Roth consistently in the backfield in passing situations. That is the third sack that Nicoletto has been a part of in tonight's game. You see what Joey Nicoletto did for the Gators last year. Well, now it's fourth down and about six. So Ole Miss will have to punt. Charles Childers. Gators going for it again. This time they got it. Picked up at the 15-yard line all the way down to the six-yard line. The Gators said they were going to be going for a lot more block punts this year. They got one last week. Now they've gotten one this week. I believe it was Tim Polk. He's the one that blocked it last week. Coming in from the outside, number 99. Watch right there. Hardly was touched at all. And who's going to pick Bill the ball Lang. up? Bill, Bill Lang. Lang picks up the ball. The Gators will have it at the Ole Miss 7. First and goal. Now it's a fourth game in a row that Florida's blocked a punt. They didn't block a punt for 10 years before that. Some things are unexplainable. First and goal, 627 remaining third quarter. Emmett Smith dropped for a loss of a yard. There you see Tim Polk, who has done it for the second week in a row. Lewis Gordon making the tackle on that last play. Rex Norris uh, is helping Jerry Anderson coach the specialty teams. Rex, Rex Norris coming from the Detroit Lions. Prior to that was at uh, Arizona State. And at Oklahoma, he coached with Galen Hall. He came in with a new attitude on the uh, Gator specialty teams. And he and Jerry Anderson, Coach Jerry Anderson, have done an excellent job getting the Gators prepared with their specialty teams. After a two-yard loss at second down and nine, Norris falling down. Some confusion down on the field. Kyle Morris lost his footing back at about the 15-yard line. I don't know if the official blew the whistle or not. Evidently, he never blew the whistle, but Kyle Morris said, hey, my knee went down. I must be down. He relaxed. He thought he was down, but Rodney Lowe didn't. So Rodney Lowe applied one final shot. Well, and of course you would do that as well if you hadn't heard a whistle. If there was no whistle, evidently there was no whistle. Kyle Morris relaxed and almost really gets hurt right here. There the knee goes down. The ball should have been blown dead right there, but there probably was no whistle, and the Ole Miss defense continued to hustle to the ball. Oh. So it is now third down and goal from the 17-yard line. Emmett Smith is going to be asked to pick up some big yardage here, and he gets it all the way down to about the four-yard line. A 13-yard gain for Emmett Smith, and I believe that'll put him over 100 yards. And he's hurt. And every Gator fan in the stadium holding their breath now. Well, Emmett did an excellent job of lowering his head right there and picking up four or five extra yards. He's going to get a block on the outside after he dances to the outside. One of the Gator wide receivers possibly, I think it's Ernie Mills, is going to come and make a block right here. Almost a clip, but it wasn't called. The DB turned his back on the wide receiver. Here we see the hit. Maybe he just had his bell rung. A bit of a concussion right there. He took a real hard hit on the head. He appears to be okay. He's back on his feet now, heading over to the Florida bench. Todd Sandroni, the free safety, come on up with a big hit. 
Now a 22-yard field goal effort by John David Francis is good. And the Gators add three points to the lead. It is now 20-8. Florida leading Mississippi with 4.43 remaining. Ten times in his career now. Emmett Smith has rushed for over 100 yards. And generally when the Gators have a running back with over 100 yards in the ball game, they've, they've, they win the ball game. Uh, Emmett Smith fortunately getting up right there. I think he's got a bit of a concussion. There's no leg damage. Uh, looks like he just got hit hard on the head. So with 4.43 remaining in the third quarter, the Gator fans are smiling. It is 20 to 8, a 12 point lead. And they're seeing a lot of offense in this second half. Uh, both teams have the ability to move the football, and the Gators are putting points on the board as well. Big plays in the second half. A kickoff return by Stacy Simmons, a block punt by Tim Polk. A big run by Emmett Smith on the third down play. And a bomb by Ole Miss to Willie Green to uh, get them seven points. Excuse me, they got six and then went for two and made it. There's the Francis kick. Jim Earl Thomas up across the 20, gets it to about the 26-yard line. Want to remind you that Sports Channel Florida brings you the excitement of Major League Baseball all week. On Sunday at 2.30, it'll be the Twins taking on the White Sox. Monday night, the Yankees travel to Cleveland, 7.30. Tuesday night, Pirates and the Mets at 7.30. Wednesday night, the Yankees and the Indians at 7.30. And on Friday night, the Mets face the Expos at 7.30. You can catch all the action right here on Sports Channel Florida. Standard equipment for the Florida sports fan. Pete Van Wehr and Jim Yarborough with 4.36 left in the third quarter. Gators up by 12. And an important possession here for Mississippi. Young pitching to Mickles. Mickles with some room. Gets it out across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Joey Nicoletto there again. Willie Sneed, the wide receiver, throwing a great block on Bill Lang. Allows Joe Mickles to get outside. Here we come with that option. Willie Green, the outside receiver, knocks Bill Lang down right there, allowing Mickles to get another five or six yards. Nice job by the wide receiver. Blocking as the option is run. They're going to measure to see if it's enough for the first down. It is. That's 14 carries, 50 yards now for Mickles. First down for Ole Miss. The ball on their own 36-yard line. Young still has it. The pass is complete to the tight end out across midfield all the way down to the 43-yard line. Wesley Walls, the two-way player who plays both offense and defense for the Rebels. A 22-yard pickup on that play for another Ole Miss first down. This is a bit of a counter option with a little bit of a delay, and Wesley Walls pretends like he's going to throw the block on Ephesians. Bartley and then takes off down the field coming up with the reception. So it's a first down at the Florida 42. Three and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Young back to throw again. Firing long downfield for Willie Green. Did he stay in bounds? No. Oh, very close. All you need in college football is one foot. Willie Green comes very close to coming up with a big reception. He the thought Gators he stayed in bounds. He sure did. It's going to be close as we look at the uh, replay. Kurt Young. In coverage, the young cornerback, Willie Green, only needs one foot in bounds with the reception. And he got it. Gators coming with the blitz. Mark Young standing strong in the pocket, throwing the ball to Willie Green. A tough break for Ole Miss. Breathe a sigh of relief, Gator fans. The Gators got a break on that call. Second and ten. Penalty markers down. Young scrambling. Heads for the sidelines, gets rid of it. And that is a completion at the 28-yard line to Reed Hines. But we've got a penalty marker in the backfield. Mark Murray blitzing from his outside linebacker position. Has a shot at Mark Young, but Young escapes to the outside, eluding the blitz of Murray. But uh, the receptions for not Ole Miss is flagged for a penalty. 
So this one is brought back. They picked up 14 yards on the pass plays. This can be very costly. They lose the 14-yard gain, and they lose five more yards. A future Gator. Et. With a little bow on her head. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that. When they have no hair, you tape, uh, you tape the bow on their head. That that's, way that's what I have to do. <laughs> Three, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen you in a bow lately. <laughs> and you won't. 316 remaining in the third quarter. Young barks out the signals. This is an official's timeout. I'm not sure what this is all about, Jim. The officials indicated it is an official's timeout. They're talking something over on the sidelines. The officials, by the way, tonight are the referee is Jimmy Harper, the umpire James Mostel, the linesman Robert Towns, the line judge Robert Caldwell, the side judge Bob Lee, the field judge Joe Curtis, and the back judge Charlie Horton. Gary Darnell, the new defensive coordinator for the Florida Gators, coming from Wake Forest. Has an excellent reputation as a defensive coach. He was a tremendous player himself at Oklahoma State. There's some Gators uh, trying to get that defense pumped up. Well, nobody was charged with a timeout there. That was an official's timeout. What the problem was, we're not sure. Now it's second down and 15. This play resumes with 3.06 remaining third quarter. The pitch is to Mickles. Mickles has some running room across the 40, across the 30, inside the 20-yard line. Big gainer for Joe Mickles. 27 yards for another Ole Miss first down. Lewis Oliver finally made the tackle, but Mickles had a lot of running room that time, Jim. Mark Murray hits Mark Young, but there's some confusion on the inside. The Gator inside linebackers get trapped inside. There's nobody to make the tackle right there as Mickles turns up field. Darrell Oliver coming over and making the hit from his safety position. Ole Miss an excellent position on the Gator 20-yard line. First down, two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. And no running room that time for Sean Sykes. A loss of a yard. I don't know what Joey Nicoletto is reading uh, on that offensive line, but whatever he's looking at is telling him where the ball is going. This is about the third or fourth time we've seen Nicoletto break through the line uh, to make the hit in the backfield, doing an excellent job from his inside linebacker position, Joey Nicoletto. That's the fourth tackle he's been involved in for a yardage loss in this game. Second down, it was more than a yard loss, a three-yard loss. Second down and 13, they mark it on the 23-yard line. Less than two minutes to go now in the third quarter. Young rolling right. Hines, the intended receiver. The pass incomplete, Tony Jones back in the coverage. Again, Tony Jones giving a bit more of a cushion to Reed Hines than, uh, than he would like, but Hines threatens him towards the end zone, then cuts to the sideline. Hines just does a nice job of running the routes wide open, but Young just can't deliver the football. Young now 9 out of 18 for 140 yards in the game, and that one touchdown, the 50-yard strike to Green. Gary Darnell yelling out instructions to his defense. Gators leading it by 12. It's 20 to 8 with a minute 48 left in the third. Young on third and long. Has good protection. The pass caught. A nice catch by Willie Green. Now boy, did he get hit. A giant hit by Lewis Oliver. Almost shakes the football loose, but Willie Green shows a lot of courage. Doesn't give the football up after the reception. Tip your hat to Willie Green right there, making the catch across the middle, and that's the most dangerous place for a receiver to go. Now it's going to be fourth down, about a yard to go for the first down. Mississippi's going to call a timeout, stopping the clock with a minute 29. Down by 12 points, they almost have to go for it, down this close. And on the sideline, Mark Young talks to Billy Brewer about what the play will be. It looks uh, to be less than a yard from our vantage point, so... Uh, Ole Miss wants to get in the end zone, put points on the board. This is the ninth play of this drive. Ole Miss showing a lot of consistency with their offense here this evening, and they're playing against an excellent Gator defense. The Gators can be proud on defense. They've only given up eight points to this, to this point 
uh, late in the third quarter. Well, we'll see what Ole Miss has come up with here on fourth and less than a yard. Mickles has been their leading ground gainer in the game. And he would seem like a logical candidate to try to pick up that yard and get the first down. Well, when you run that option, the Gator defense has no idea what they might see. That's the threat of the option, fullback, tailback, quarterback. Who's going to keep the ball? Who's going to have the football? A minute 29 remaining, third quarter. Gators leading it by 12, and a big play here for the Gator defense. It's fourth and less than a yard to go for the first down. Checking off, it looks like. The give is to Mickles. He's got the first down. Mickles to about the eight-yard line. Sometimes the quarterback will call the play, check with me, check with me, and him, then he'll go up to the line of scrimmage, see where the strength of the defense is, and then run away from it. And I'm sure that's exactly what Young did right there. He went up to the line. He checked off. He ran away from the strength. See Nicolito blitzing on the right, so he calls the play to the left. And did you see what Ole Miss did in that play? They put Lewis Gordon, who's normally a linebacker, in that backfield to give him an extra blocker. And he helped open up the hole for Mickles. It's first down. The ball marked at the eight-yard line. First and goal. Mickles again down to the four-yard line. Ole Miss doing an excellent job on this uh, series. Trace Armstrong gets caught with an outside rush right there. Young delivers the ball to Mickles, the fullback. Again, Ole Miss features the fullback in their option offense attack. So it's second and goal from the four. Only about 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And a timeout will be taken. So that'll stop the clock with 28 seconds left. What it will also do, Jim, is leave the Rebels with only one timeout. And that could become a factor late in the game. Right, especially if they score right now and narrow this uh, gap. Uh, both teams see to, seem to be a bit confused with that last play. Ole Miss on offense. The Gator defense wasn't exactly sure where to line up. Uh, Ole Miss calls timeout. The crowd just over 42,000 here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. And we'd like to remind you that Sports Channel Florida expands its college football schedule with live coverage each Saturday of the Southwest Conference. Tune in next Saturday, September 17th at 1, when the Baylor Bears take on the Iowa State Cyclones right here on Sports Channel Florida standard equipment for the Florida sports fan. Second down and goal at the four-yard line. Young still has it, back to throw, and it's a touchdown. Wide open in the end zone, Wesley Walls, the tight end. And that brings the Rebels back to within six points. It is 20 to 14. Well, a bit of deception here, the counter option. They fake the ball to the fullback. Walls sneaks into the secondary, untouched. Young delivers a nice soft pass. Ole Miss comes up with six points. Second touchdown pass of the game for Mark Young. This Very well-conceived play right there by Ole Miss. Brian Owen attempting the extra point. It is good. And the Rebels are back to within five of the Gators. We've got a ball game here on the SEC opener for both of these schools. Florida leads it by five with 24 seconds to go in the third. Well, you know that speech we were talking about the coaches making at halftime that this game is up for grabs. They're going to make the same speech as we go into the fourth quarter because whoever wants it in the fourth quarter will be the team that walks away with a victory. Both, both these teams evenly matched here this evening in Jackson, Mississippi. Run the football, run the football, run the football, and then all of a sudden you keep it and dump it out to your big tight end. Wesley Walls, very impressive performer, 6'5", 250. Excellent tight end for Ole Miss, and we mentioned he was a three-year starter previously as an outside linebacker for Ole Miss. And that was his first career touchdown. It is 20 to 15, the Gators by five. A good drive that time by Ole Miss. Ten plays, 74 yards. They consumed four minutes and 19 seconds of the clock. 
And now they're back to within five points of the Gators. It was 3-0 Gators at halftime. Things have really opened up in this second half. Stacy Simmons at the two-yard line. Simmons, who electrified the crowd with an 85-yard kickoff return to open the second half, gets this one out to the 24, a 21-yard return. Tony Harris making the stop for Ole Miss. Well, Stacy Simmons just so dangerous anytime he touches the football. We've seen uh, we've seen him so many times uh, last year and this year just create the excitement uh, in the stadium when he touches the football. Now that Gator offense has to come out and answer the challenge that has been uh, given them by Ole Miss. And with Emmett Smith shaken up on that last possession, the handoff is to the fullback out to the 25-yard line. Big hit applied there by outside linebacker Tony Bennett on Willie McGrady. There is our Gator trivia question. There is our Gator trivia answer. Fourth quarter about to begin. Second down and eight. Second and eight at the 25-yard line. Kyle Morris pitching the ball to Wayne Williams. Williams in there for Emmett Smith. Gets out across the 35. We're trying to get a report from the Florida sideline on Emmett Smith. He was shaken up on his last carry. Wayne Williams does an excellent job right here. He's got great speed. He gets some help from... Uh, Cedric, no, is that Willie McGrady, number 38, and uh, just powers down the field. Really nice job by uh, Williams right there. It's a first down out at the Gator 37. Gators leading it by five. Wayne Williams picked up about two yards that time, maybe three. Pete Harris in on the stop for Ole Miss, along with Kevin Pritchett. It's a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. Final quarter of play. Just under 14 minutes to go. Gators by five. Second and seven. Williams looking for running room outside. Runs into a wall of red. Well, that Ole Miss defense very fired up right now. Their offense has gotten them back into the football game, and that uh, has transposed itself to excitement on the defensive line of the scrimmage for Ole Miss, and they're swarming to the football right now. And they probably also sense that Emmett Smith is out of the ball game, and they smell blood. Doug Jacobs and Lopez Jones in on that last stop. Although Wesley Wall started the game both ways, tight end and linebacker. He's not played much at linebacker tonight. Lopez Jones has done most of the playing in that spot. It is third down and seven. Morris back to throw. The protection breaking down. Morris can't find an open man. He's going to try to run for the first down, and he may have gotten it. Nope, they're going to mark it just shy of the first down yardage. Kyle Morris coming within inches of the first down marker, possibly a foot or so. Uh, looks certainly less than a yard. Getting pressure right here. Can't find anybody in the secondary. Ole Miss does an excellent job in coverage. Morris breaks to the outside. We mentioned he has good speed for a quarterback at 4'6", but looks like he's about uh, half a foot short, uh, so the Gators line up in punt formation. Hank Rohn comes in. Pat Coleman drops back for Ole Miss. Rohn gets a good high kick away. Coleman at the 14-yard line loses a yard after making the reception. This game, a pretty even ball game right from the start. The Gators leading it by five, but through three quarters, as you look at the last scoring drive, total yardage almost dead even. 255 yards for Ole Miss, 240 yards for Florida. Yeah, this has been quite a battle. The momentum's been going back and forth. Uh, the Gators have had the lead uh, pretty consistently throughout the evening, but Ole Miss continues to challenge the Gators uh, on every series. Herbert Rohn's doing, excuse me, Hank Rohn's doing an excellent job punting the football tonight. 
That was a 40-yard kick with no return. And down goes Young. Big Rondy Weston, number 68, doing an excellent job for the Gators on the pass rush. Let's go down to Larry Vital on the sideline. Larry? Well, Jim, no problem with Emmett Smith. He was a little bit woozy and got winded after that play in which he was helped off the field. But Emmett is fine. They gave him a rest during that series. But as we head into crunch time down the stretch, Emmett Smith will be in the Gator backfield. Well, that's good news, Larry. We appreciate that report. Yeah, that is good news. I know a lot of the Gator fans concerned about that. Second down, about 15 or 16 yards to go for the first down. Ball is back in the six-yard line. Young handing the ball off. That's Damon Billings, backup fullback out of Jackson, Tennessee. Who got it only to about the nine-yard line. Well, Pete, we talked about momentum, and the Gators have a great chance right now of taking it away from Ole Miss if they can shut them down right here on this series. Force Ole Miss to punt. That Gator offense can come back on the field with excellent position. This is a big third down play right here. It is third down, about 14 yards to go for the first down. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the game. Gators leading it by five. Young looking over the middle. Now fires out to Reed Hines. He's got him on the 18-yard line. But as soon as Hines caught the ball, he then caught a little bit of Lewis Oliver. Now the Gators secondary does an excellent job right here. They'll give up the little short pass. They will give this one up. They didn't want anybody getting behind them. Lewis Oliver knew exactly what he was doing. Excellent play by the All-American safety. Ole Miss is, in fact, forced to punt. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You get hit by Lewis Oliver, you're going to remember it. Again, the Gators appear to be going for the block here. They've got ten men up on that line. Stacy Simmons awaiting the Childers punt back at the 43-yard line. He's got it, and he loses his footing at the 45, and that's where the Gators will put it in play. Not bad field position, though, with 11-15 remaining. Oh, yeah, that's terrific field position. Anytime you line up on your own 45-yard line as an offensive unit, you got to be excited. So that Gator offense, they have to realize that uh, there's a lot on their shoulders right now in this huddle. They can not only put points on the board, but they can eat that clock up. A 40-yard punt that time by Childers. First down for the Gators. Emmett Smith is back in there. And that is good news for all Gator fans, for all football fans. Emmett Smith has it. And he's still on his feet. He eluded one tackle and still somehow was able to squeeze two yards out of that play. Lester Brinkley had him in his grasp. And he got away from him to pick up about two more yards. I think that answers any questions as to his health. Uh, Lest Lester Brinkley, number 98, does in fact have Emmett, but somehow he does escape. Offensive lineman can never give up, can never stop, because Emmett Smith is never down until there's two or three bodies laying on top of him. Don Wigley ultimately makes the tackle. Excuse me. 19 carries, 106 yards now for Emmett Smith. His 10th 100-yard game in his career. This is only the 13th game he's played in his regular season career. This time he's on the receiving end of a... Kyle Morris pass. He's dropped just shy of the first down by Pete Harris, number 49. Well, uh, the Gators want to get the ball in Emmett Smith's hands as often as possible. Here they do it via the pass route. It'll be third down, about two yards to go for the first down. The ball on the Ole Miss 47. There's what Emmett's done today on the ground. And he's trying to pick up some more here. He's got the first down, falling across the 45-yard line to about the 44. 43, perhaps, they'll mark it. We'll see. Emmett Smith almost knocked to his knees in the backfield, but with the great agility, puts his left arm down. Watch him, watch him put the arm down, the right arm, and dive forward, knew exactly where he had to get to get the first down. Just a terrific effort by the sophomore tailback. So the Gators have a first down at the Ole Miss 44. 9.40, the time left in the game. Gators leading it by five. It's 20 to 15. Eat that clock up. That's what they're thinking right now on offense. Eat that clock up. This is Wayne Williams who's back in there. Emmett Smith being given another breather. Williams picks up about four yards down to the 40. Stevon Moore, the right cornerback, making the stop for Ole Miss. Yeah, I saw Emmett on the prior play uh, take himself out of the ball game. He's a bit winded, a bit shaken still from the hit, and uh, Wayne Williams is out there at tailback right now. 
It's one thing the Gators have this year is a lot of depth at that running back, all those running back spots. We saw those two freshmen against Montana State last week, Willie McClendon, Dexter McNabb. You wouldn't feel too uncomfortable putting them in there in a game like this. Now a little razzle-dazzle. Oh, Williams fake. gonna keep it. It was a fake handoff on the end around. And Wayne Williams is in for the touchdown. 39 yards. And that may be the backbreaker against the Rebels. Well, Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator who is, who is new to the Florida Gators this year, we see a bit of his philosophy out there this evening. A little razzle-dazzle on the reverse. Gators have great field position. Wayne Williams fakes the reverse to Tony Lomack, and no one is near him. Cedric Smith is going to wind up throwing the last block downfield. Cedric trying to get two guys, but Wayne Williams with that great speed sprints into the end zone. John David Francis adds the extra point. Williams now six carries for 65 yards. 8.51 remaining, 27-15 Gators. We'll be back. Eight fifty-one remaining in the game. Gators leading it now, 27-15 after a 55-yard drive. Five plays. Took only two minutes and 24 seconds. There's the John David Francis kick, a short kick this time. Bouncing on about the 22-yard line into the arms of Pat Coleman. But Coleman running away from trouble and finally is brought down at the 24-yard line. He ran a long ways there for very little yardage. Emmett and Wayne Williams, the one-two punch. Williams over 100, or Emmett Smith over 100 yards. Williams with 65 yards and six carries. So the two of them together, about 170 yards on the night. Well, Wayne Williams doing an excellent job. The senior tailback, he may, he's made a contribution from his freshman year on. Uh, it's nice to see him get in the end zone. First down for the Rebels. Young, back to throw. And the pass is incomplete. Reed Hines, the intended receiver. There's that last scoring drive. 192 yards total on the ground now in this game for the Gators. Most of it by Emmett Smith and Wayne Williams. Cedric Smith has picked up some yardage tonight. Second down and 10. Young looking long downfield, firing for Hines, and it's incomplete. And that'll make it third and ten. Let's go down to the Florida sideline and Larry Vitell. Head to win. They're going to talk about the fake reverse to Wayne Williams and 100 yards by Emmett Smith. But coming in, special teams were the big story. Ole Miss had big plays on the special teams tonight. The Gators special teams have made the difference. Superior field position and also those two big plays with the block punt and the kickoff return. Young now 12 out of 23 for 164 yards. Third and 10, a passing situation here. And they're going to run it instead, which was not a wise choice. Nichols was the ball carrier. Trace Armstrong again on the tackle. And Tim Palk also getting a chance to play on defense. Uh, Palk, the young man that blocked the punt that uh, led to a Gator score. Almost a bit late there, but he's hustling. So now field position again will be good for the Gators as Childers is in the game to punt Stacy Simmons. Standing on his own 40-yard line. Childers gets another good kick away. He's done a good job tonight. At the 35-yard line, Simmons has it. Simmons trying to reverse direction. Runs right into the hands of some red-shirted Rebels. A 10-yard return for Stacy Simmons. And it's a first down at the Gator 45. Charles Childers really bombs this punt. Stacy Simmons has hardly any chance at all because the kick is so high, but he does try and get outside. He's like a, a water bug. 
with his quickness out there. Look at him stop, reverse feel. A lot of talent, Stacy Simmons. Herbert Perry has checked in now at quarterback. He hands off to the fullback who bowls his way out across midfield. Gets it into Rebel territory at about the 49. Yeah, Willie McGrady, bull is the right word there. Stevon Moore making the stop. So Herbert Perry getting his first playing time of the night. Sophomore out of Mayo, Florida, Kerwin Bell's former school. He was in a battle with Kyle Morris all during the preseason for the number one job. Morris appears to have won that, but Perry will get some playing time. You can be assured of that. Second that, down and four. That's true. Gator coaches have a lot of confidence in Herbert Perry. Now the freshman Willie McClendon with his first carry of the night. That's the young fellow you mentioned a few moments ago. Boy, he really was impressive last Saturday against Montana State. Really showed a lot of speed and strength. The stop made by Lester Brinkley. It'll be shy of a first down by about two yards. Kyle Morris on the night, 6 out of 14 for 88 yards in the passing department. That Gator offensive line, Big David Williams, All-American candidate, Kevin Sills, Tracy Daniels, Hassam Ishmael, and John Durden all doing an excellent job for the Gators up front all evening. McGrady and McClendon in the backfield now. McGrady trying for the first down is going to come up about a yard shy at about the 46-yard line. Lopez Jones making the stop for the Rebels. So Ole Miss will get the ball back. 6.39 remaining in the game. Gators leading it by 12. Gators taking no chances. Pete's going to punt this ball away. Even though it's uh, maybe a foot for the first down, they're not going to take any chances back Ole Miss up with a good punt. Pat Coleman standing at about his own 11-yard line. Another good high kick by Roan. Fair catch called for by Coleman at the 15. A 31-yard kick, but it puts the Rebels inside their 20-yard line. That's exactly what he wanted to do, get the ball high. Force Ole Miss to make the fair catch inside the 20. Just Hank Rohn just doing an excellent job this evening. He only had one punt last Saturday. A lot of uncertainty about the Gator punting game, but uh, Hank Rohn doing an excellent job tonight. So it's 6-12 remaining in the game. The Rebels regain possession on their own 15. It's 27-15 Florida. And the Gators appear to be well on their way toward their first conference victory and their second overall victory of the year. Jeff Roth from Seminole, Florida doing an excellent job again coming up with a tackle. I think he's probably going to lead the team in tackles this evening and that's very difficult for a nose guard. He usually sacrifices his body so that linebackers can make tackles but he's out there making tackles himself. Darren Billings was the ball carrier on that last play. He lost about a yard, so it's second down and 11. I'm going to tell you something Billy Brewer said about the Gator offensive line right after this play. The pass is completed to Coleman at the 25-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds by Tony Jones after making the catch. It'll be very close to a first down. A lot of inexperience at the cornerback position for the Gators. Tony Jones has started a few games in his career. They're looking for him to provide uh, some excellent defense this season if the Gators are to have any success. And he's getting a baptism out here this evening. Billy Brewer talking about the Florida team earlier this week said of the down linemen, Trace Armstrong, Jeff Roth, and Rondi Weston, that Galen Hall may have the only three defensive down linemen in the country at one time who will all go on to play more football after this year. All of them very highly thought of by NFL scouts. Yeah, they'll certainly get a chance uh, via the draft uh, to play in the NFL. It is a first down for Ole Miss with five and a half minutes remaining. All three of them five-year seniors, too. A lot of experience down front for the Gators. First and ten at the 25. Young back to throw. In and out of the hands of Reed Hines. Young pass was intended for Hines and is incomplete. Second down. Bill Lang back in the coverage. It'll be second down and ten. Albert says let's party Saturday night.
Time very much in the Gators' favor now. Just 5.26 remaining, a 12-point lead. Young now 13 out of 25 for 175 yards. He's thrown the ball well tonight. Oh, he's an excellent quarterback. He's done a very good job for Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss offense has played well. They just haven't been able to put the points on the board. Penalty markers are down, and so is Mark Young. The football is loose. And this one's going to take a little time to get sorted out. They've got a penalty marker down at about the 32-yard line. The ball is marked on the 18. That counter option, he reverses out, and... Uh, but again, Jeff Roth is standing right there in the backfield. Roth just uh, giving an all-conference, uh, all-American performance out there this evening. This one goes against the Gators, brings it all the way out to the 35-yard line. That's one thing that Galen Hall's not going to be happy with in this game. The Gators have had a lot of penalties. I've never, I've never met a happy coach. <laughs> They've always got something to be disappointed. One penalty is too many. <laughs> That's right. First down. Eight penalties, 86 yards assessed against the Gators in this game. Young, after the fake handoff, throws the short pass. Odom got a hand up. It'll be second and ten. Jerry Odom from Merritt Island knocking the football down, doing a nice job at inside linebacker. Got a four-inch vertical jump. 4.50 the time remaining. Old Johnny Red not too happy over there. Second and ten. Young completes it to his tight end. Out close to a first down. That was Sean Souter on the receiving end of that pass. The tight end is delaying at the line of scrimmage, waiting for the linebackers to drop out of their zone. Then he sneaks in there. Sean Souter coming up with the catch. Rondy Weston putting pressure on Young, getting his attention as does Huey Richardson. Enough yardage for the first down. It'll be first and ten at the Ole Miss 45. Young back to throw again. The pass is complete to Willie Green, but what a hit he took. Richard Fain, the right cornerback, and Jerry Odom also in on the stop. Another first down. 11 yards on that game. I think the Gator defense is consciously willing to give up the short pass, eat the clock up. They're playing loose in the secondary, don't want Ole Miss to score quickly. First down, Young handing off this time to Sykes, and Sykes gets it out just inside the 40-yard line to about the 39. Sykes hasn't carried the ball much tonight. The tailback out of West Point, Mississippi. Part of a high school backfield that was called Thunder and Lightning. He was the lightning part of it. Well, Ole Miss really doesn't feature the tailback in the option. They uh, would rather give the ball to the fullback, although they do pitch to the tailback on occasion. But the fullback is the one that carries the ball most often in the Ole Miss option. Second down and six. At the Gator 40 with three and a half minutes remaining. 27-15, Florida leads it. Young rolling left. Being chased again, and down he goes. Back at the 41-yard line. A penalty marker is also thrown. Tony McCoy, number 71. And Brad Culpepper, number 50, got in there. But we're going to have yet another penalty assessed against the Gators. Now, Tony McCoy from uh, Orlando puts pressure on the quarterback. He has Young in his grasp. And it uh, looks like a late hit on Brad Culpepper. Is that what they're calling? That one moves it down to the 26-yard line. Yeah, that wasn't, uh, I don't know about that one. He was uh, hustling to the play. He had his hat up. He didn't spear him. He had his head face up. Sykes, the ball carrier, on first and 10. He gets about a yard to about the 25. Nine penalties now against the Gators for 101 yards. But Florida able to 
lead this game late by a 27-15 score. It was only a 3-0 Gator lead at halftime. This game really opened up in the second half. And the big play was the very first play of the second half when Stacy Simmons ran back a kickoff 85 yards. Young is going to be brought down again back at the 35-yard line. His protection beginning to break down a little bit in this fourth quarter. Now Big Tim Polk, number 99, again doing an excellent job on the rush as he gets a chance to play. Young, Young had no chance there, Pete. 2.20 remaining. It's 27-15 Gators, and we'll be back. You see the story, Gators up by 12 with just 2.20 remaining. It is third down and 19 for the Rebels. They're at the Gator 35. Mark Young pitching on the end around to Pat Coleman. Coleman inside the 30, inside the 20, and out of bounds. Just inside the 14-yard line, Richard Fain moved him out. So a little razzle-dazzle tried by the Rebels, and it picked up some yardage. Pat Coleman coming around on the reverse. Ole Miss not having a chance to use that play this evening. Pat Coleman from Cleveland, Mississippi. It just says Cleveland. I'm sure that's not Cleveland, Ohio. Right? No, that's Cleveland, Mississippi. He was the Mississippi <laughs> Junior College Player of the Year as a running back at Delta Junior College last year. First down at the Gator 14. 2.13 remaining. Young in trouble. Oh. He's brought down again. I'll tell you what. We're seeing, Jim, something that the Mississippi people were talking about early in the week, that they, they tend to run out of gas a little bit in the fourth quarter because they're not very deep, and everybody in that line, offensively or defensively, has to play just about every minute. And there's a lot of second unit guys in there for the Gators right now. Brad Culpepper, Mark Murray putting pressure right there. Glenn Neely, Tony McCoy getting a chance to play. Big 99, Polk doing an excellent job. Second down out, about 14. Young back to throw. Firing it out to Mickles, the fullback, and he is brought down, dragged down at the 20-yard line. Mark Murray making that stop. The clock continues to tick. Just a minute 18 remaining. Watch Tim Polk coming from his outside linebacker position. Look at the balance. He, only, he refuses to get knocked down. Just merely puts his arm down and continues forward to hit the quarterback. Polk plays a lot bigger than his 6'1", 215 pounds. Now John Darnell has checked in at quarterback for Ole Miss. He can't find a man open. He goes down inside the 20. Darnell, a junior out of Corinth, Mississippi. Tim Polk again making the tackle. He's just doing an excellent job since he's been in there. All of these linebackers, and it looks like you've got great depth with Galen's linebacking core. We've got a Gator player injured. And the clock has stopped with 44 seconds remaining, and we'll be right back. Sophomore tackle Tony McCoy, the player injured. He walks off under his own power. Time running out. Darnell back to throw. The pass incomplete intended for Wesley Walls, the tight end. That'll stop the clock with 39 seconds. And it'll give the ball back to the Gators. And Gator fans can start celebrating now. Only 39 seconds remaining to play. Florida leading at 27 to 15. Jim, your impressions of the Gators tonight? Well, well-balanced team. A lot of talent on offense. A lot of talent on defense. The offense comes out this evening. They have success running the football. They have some success passing the football. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of balance on that Gator offense. Kyle Morris gets another game under his belt, a little bit more experience. Uh, and as you mentioned, a lot of players getting a chance to play tonight. Ole Miss presenting a big challenge for the Gators, but the Gators rise to the challenge. Now the Gators will just play out the clock. Herbert Perry taking the snap. He'll fall on the ball. And you've got to give Galen Hall very happy on the sidelines. You've also got to give some credit to Billy Brewer and this Mississippi team. They came ready to play tonight. Look at Galen. His shirts are getting baggy now. He's losing so much weight. 
Well, that diet's something else, isn't it? He's going to have to go out and get a new wardrobe. That Galen will be 2-0 and since wearing a tie on the sidelines. Looking good, looking good. Well, we knew Ole Miss would be a big challenge for the Gators this, uh, this evening. The SEC battle is always like that, and I guess every Gator fan would have hoped for this kind of outcome. Some positive things happening on both sides of the line of scrimmage, offenses, offense and defensively, and coming up with a big win. 27-15 is your final score. The Gators have defeated the Rebels of Ole Miss. Florida now 2-0. In overall play this year, 1-0 in the conference. There's the congratulatory handshake from Billy Brewer to Galen Hall. And the players congratulating each other on was really a pretty well-played football game. The Gators did have a few penalties more than they would have wanted. But they will come back to Gainesville 2-0 after defeating the Rebels 27-15. And Pete, the game again was very much in doubt until midway through the fourth quarter when Wayne Williams scored that touchdown on the fake reverse and that gave the Gators the breathing room they needed and then the defense went out and took control of the remaining of the ball game. Didn't allow Ole Miss to get down and get on the scoreboard. We'll be back with a closing note and recap this Gator victory over the Rebels right after this.